I'd found Malloy just in time to watch him take a bullet. I wasn't sure whether that qualified as solving the case or not. Either way, I had to tell Fitzpatrick the bad news. He comes by my office, and I fill him in on what's happened. Second agent open fired. No! Killed him. I barely got out of it alive. So for the next few minutes, I relate the events that led up to finding Malloy. But it's clear that his death is only part of the reason for Fitzpatrick's reaction. He's been withholding information from me since the beginning. Now it's time to find out what he knows about Malloy's work. An unfortunate turn of events. Extremely unfortunate. Well, I guess this brings our partnership to an end. What do I owe you? I think you owe me some details. To what do you refer? Look, Malloy was onto something big. He was just about to tell me until someone turned him into a cork board. I want to know what happened. But most of all, I want to know what's going on here. No. No, don't get into it. Forget this business. Take the money and walk away. It's too late. I'm already involved. Now one, possibly three, NSA agents are dead. And for some strange reason, they're going to think that I'm involved with all this. And even if I wanted to drop out right now, the odds are they're going to find me and fill me with so much lead, they're going to be able to use me as a pencil. But aside from that, Malloy was on to something big. And those boxes are the key. You know about the boxes? Oh, yeah. Well, that puts a different light on things, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, if you insist on staying with this, becoming involved, as you say, I've got to be able to be sure that I can rely on you, trust you, you know, this isn't the kind of thing that you can sort of dabble in and then back away. Well, normally I do have a little problem with commitment. But on this, I'm in 100%. All right. Thomas Malloy and I, scientific researchers, were working together in Roswell. And we became friends. Our friendship really developed when we were transferred to China after the great disaster of World War III. After some time, Malloy took me into his confidence and showed me what he'd been secretly working on, translating ancient alien hieroglyphics, you know, taken from the crash of that Roswell spacecraft. So you know what it is he was gonna tell me? No, I don't think so, not really. I knew that he'd been, you know, deciphering these ancient hieroglyphics, some of the symbols that were found there. The dominating symbol seemed to be, or the dominating information seemed to be, that there was a second spacecraft approaching the Earth. And there was a continuing, recurring symbol of a black sun, mysterious. He didn't get that at all. That really bugged him. Well, this is all really interesting. But it's not the kind of information somebody kills for. Tex, screw your head on straight! I'm ready to believe there is a second spacecraft down somewhere on this planet Earth, unfound. Now, imagine that spacecraft filled with a technology that none of us have ever dreamed of. Imagine what someone would do to obtain that technology. Imagine what the government would do. Wouldn't it be worth killing for? You've got one of the boxes, don't you? I do, I do. Receiving it led me to believe that my friend's life was in danger. <laughs> well, then you probably know more about the boxes than I do. Variations on a Chinese puzzle box. Thomas had, oh, my. Tom had maybe four or five or six of them made to his specifications while he was in China. You know, just some kind of a novelty, I think. Do you know how to open them? No. Never occurred to me to ask. Now, what do you know about the boxes? Well, I had one. And the NSA picked me up. They gave me a choice between giving them the box or having my brains blown out. 
Recovering that box has got to be our first priority. Otherwise, I doubt we can continue. That's not going to be easy. I'll see what I can do. Just one more thing. You talked a lot about trusting me. Why should I trust you? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, I have more money and other vanities than I could possibly ever use. My purpose in being here at the center, if there is a center to all this, is to follow the trail towards which my old friend pointed me. I don't know where it will lead, but I intend to reach that end. I guess we're in business. There's something about Fitzpatrick that makes me trust him totally, though I have been wrong in that area before. He knows about the boxes, same as Regan does, but their motivations seem to be worlds apart. I figure my best strategy is to stay right here on the middle ground. The fact of the matter is, I want to know what Malloy was going to tell me. That's my motivation. And the first step from here is to recover the box I handed over to the NSA. Do you have a fax? Do you have a fax? Well, it looks like my suspicions were correct. Now I'll just have to find out why Horton was posing as the Black Arrow Killer. When I get to the waterfront warehouse, I'm a little surprised to see it still standing. From the smell of wet ashes, I'd guess the fire department got here in a hurry. They probably took away the charred bodies of Malloy and those government agents. At least Malloy went quickly. With any luck, I'll find something useful in here. If anything survived the explosion, that is. Here's a little tidbit our government boys missed. According to this postal receipt, Malloy sent out five packages nine days ago. I guess that tells me how many boxes I'm looking for. Some names of Asian cities are printed on this piece of paper. This flight schedule seems a little too exorbitant to be taken seriously. The NSA didn't get a all of Malloy's notes. I wonder what this item 186 is. These pallets seem to be a little unsettled. Never lock safe. I seem to recall there's a mathematical relationship to the serial number and the combination to open it. a scrap of paper with some hand-drawn diagrams on it. This scrap refers to some sort of containment chamber with instructions on how to open it. This looks like an old house key. It's all locked up. This 
Paperback book's well worn. From the imprints on this page, I'd say Malloy was writing on the title page and then tore it out. Looks like Malloy might have been trying to make an anagram out of the title, There Are Messages From Outer Space. Oh, a briefcase. This should be interesting. This notebook must contain information on Malloy's work. I can't make out the writing. Looks like some sort of personal shorthand. I wonder. Maybe Regan could figure out some of her father's chicken scratch. Hello, Tex Murphy. Decide to take me up on my proposition? We need to talk. Sounds serious. When do you want to get together? How about as soon as possible? All right. There's a lounge here at the Imperial. Meet me in a half an hour. The Imperial is in the new city. Not too nice, but a few cuts above the Ritz. I walk into the lobby, then down a flight of stairs to the lounge. I'm not looking forward to telling Regan what happened to her father, but she deserves to know, and I'm gonna need her help. Thanks for the bourbon. Is everything okay? Tell me about your father. M my father worked for the military. I was born in China. I was raised there. We were really pretty close when I was younger, especially after my mother died. And then, um, you know, we moved back here when he retired. Then he married that... that teenage cult digger. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, I had a little bit of a falling out. I just, I just want to see him again. I talked to your father last night. You did? What, where is he? I want to see him. It's too late, Reagan. What do you mean? The NSA killed him. Almost got both of us last night. I'm sorry. I sent all the, those boxes out. I recovered something. Let's see if it looks familiar to you. Yes, it's my father's. I recognize this writing. But he wrote it all in his own personal shorthand. I, it's almost impossible for me to figure out. Why don't you give it a try anyway? It's one of the leads I'm working on to see what your father was doing. It's lucky the NSA didn't get this. You think it's that important? Yeah, I do. I remember a conversation he had with a man who said that if he could make a translation, it would be worth a fortune. Maybe it's tied to the boxes. 
I brought mine with me. Yeah, I had one, but the NSA confiscated it. But I know somebody else who's got one. Who? Gordon Fitzpatrick. Oh, God. Gordon Fitzpatrick. I haven't heard that name since I was a little kid. He used to work for my father. Well, he's as anxious to recover the boxes as you are. In fact, he's paying my tab. I say we form a triple alliance. He's got more connections than either one of us have got. Um, I... Let's wait and see what happens. Here, take a look at this. My father made it when we were in Peking, and several others like it. He didn't show me how to open it, though. How many of these are there? Oh, five, I think. Look, why don't you let me take this and see if I can get it opened up? I'm not sure I like that idea. I mean, you could open it up and find the others and take all the money for yourself. Listen, Regan, you gotta trust me. You can't do this by yourself. Nobody can. You need my help and I need your help. I guess I don't have much choice, do I? Tex, don't run out on me. I already lost my father. I won't.